Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing cerebral vascular accidents, aka strokes. So let's get into it. There's two categories of strokes. There are ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes. Ischemic strokes are the most common, and when you think of the word stroke, you hear the word stroke, you probably think ischemic stroke. So what happens in these strokes is there is a clot, okay? So a blood clot travels to the brain and occludes um, one of the cerebral arteries. And since it's not getting blood flow, it's not getting oxygen, hence the ischemia, okay? So not getting oxygen to the brain. That's the most common type of stroke. The other type of stroke that a person could have is called a hemorrhagic stroke. And we know a hemorrhage, that's bleeding, right? So when you hear the word hemorrhage, think blood. A big cause of this are aneurysms. So weakened blood vessels that rupture. So weakened blood vessels in the brain that rupture. What are some big reasons why this can happen? Hypertension, and then the overuse of a blood thinner. So maybe they've been prescribed a blood thinner and it's just not an appropriate dose for them, it's too high for them. Or they're taking multiple uh, drugs that could thin the blood. Maybe they're taking like a warfarin, Coumadin, and then also an aspirin on top of that, right? So things like that can contribute to an aneurysm and um, a hemorrhagic stroke. So who's at risk? The big one, I put it in stars here, People with high blood pressure, okay? The higher your blood pressure, the higher your risk. People with diabetes, the obese, people with a heart condition called atrial fibrillation, AFib, those who are smokers or use cocaine, again, just like hypertension, that constriction of the blood vessels, um, people on the birth control pill, I'll tell you, as a student, the first stroke patient I ever took care of was the same age as me. She was uh, 20 years old, and she was on the birth control pill, and also she was a cigarette smoker, and then she had a stroke. Okay, so when we think strokes, we usually think like elderly people, older people, and that is the most common population that gets them, but really, can be a lot, okay, can be anybody. And then atherosclerosis, this is like the building up of like plaque in our vessels, okay? So our vessels don't work as well, they're too uh, crowded because they're full of plaque, and that's not good. So these are the people that are at risk for having a stroke. When it comes to signs and symptoms, it kind of depends. So we have the left-sided stroke and the right-sided stroke. So what part of the brain did the clot or the hemorrhage happen? Okay, so that's going to affect the way the patient acts. So if it happens on the left side, it's actually going to affect your right side of the body. So left-sided signs and symptoms, they're going to have difficulty reading, writing, and speaking. The right side of the body will be weak or even paralyzed. They're going to have visual field changes, so difficulty seeing. And they may express um, depression, feelings of depression, or feelings of anger. On the flip side of that are the right-sided people. So the stroke happened on the right side of the brain. They will lose their depth perception, which you can imagine is very dangerous, especially, you know, fall risks, things like that. They tend to overestimate their abilities. That kind of like confidence, like, oh, I'm fine, it's not that bad, I can do it, and then something bad happens as a result. They will, of course, have left-sided weakness and or paralysis. And then they tend to be a little bit more impulsive in behavior. So risk-taking behaviors that they otherwise would not have done. And I'm sure you've heard of this, but I wanted to review it here. Um, the FAST acronym when it comes to a stroke. F is for face. So asking them to smile. Does their face seem uneven? Sometimes it's not like the obvious, like, oh. Right? Um, so it looks normal, but then you say, can you smile for me? And they smile and it's like kind of crooked. That's one. A is for arm drift. So asking them, can you raise both of your arms? And then maybe they'll do it and they'll raise this one and this one they can't. Okay? Their speech, when they're talking to you, is it jarbled? Are they saying, you know, things that don't make any sense? Are they not being able to talk at all? Are they saying just like weird sounds? And then T is for time. 
So time equals brain. The sooner that we can get um, help for these patients, the better the chances are. So you've had the stroke, immediate um, attention from the nurse, if you're like in the hospital or something like that, is going to be key, okay? So time equals brain. Now let's talk about our nursing interventions for our stroke patients. So our initial stuff, the stuff we're gonna do right away. Of course, we're gonna take really good vital signs on our patients, frequent vital signs. And I put this in parentheses here just as a little reminder for this. When we have an elevated temperature, when we have a fever, that just naturally increases our intracranial pressure. So somebody who's had a stroke does not need that on top of it, okay? And I know you're thinking, stroke, yeah, blood pressure, that's the thing we need to focus on. And yes, definitely do that, but don't forget about the temperature too, because the temperature also plays a role. We're gonna give oxygen, likely they will order an EKG. Um, we're gonna keep the head of the bed elevated at least 30 degrees and we wanna do a really thorough head to toe assessment. So level of consciousness, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular, all of that stuff is really important. Meds we're gonna give, we're gonna give TPA, which is a thrombolytic, and give it right away. So like before I said, time equals brain, the sooner we get this, the sooner the patient is treated with this, the better their outcomes are gonna be. I put surgical on here as well, of course, we're not gonna be doing the surgery, right? The surgeon would be doing the surgery, but we can prepare the patient and assist afterwards and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to mention what it is. So the surgery is a carotid artery angioplasty with stenting. So that is a possible thing that the patient could have done. And this is all like the right away stuff. When it comes to aftercare, some things we're gonna do are assessing for communication deficits. So any aphasias, expressive, receptive, swallowing impairments. So before you let them eat the first time, make sure that they're not an aspiration risk. Do a swallowing um, assessment, and usually we're gonna get speech therapy involved in that. If they can ambulate, get them up and moving. If they can't, turning and repositioning is gonna be very important. We wanna prevent skin breakdown and muscle atrophy. We're gonna elevate the effective side if edema is present. A lot of times edema will occur in the hands. We're gonna be emotionally supportive for our patients and their family members, right? Because they might have permanent damage and this is like a new normal for everybody. We're gonna encourage rest periods because they're gonna be easily fatigued. We're gonna support that affected arm so what happens is, let's say you had, um, your left side was affected and now it's paralyzed, okay? If you're not using it and you're not even, you know, you don't have the strength to even hold it up, just the weight of your arm in your shoulder can um, cause it to dislocate. So um, very good and important teaching that they support that arm. Meds we would give, probably gonna be started on a low dose aspirin to prevent future clots from happening. Now, of course, this is only gonna be for our ischemic strokes. We're not gonna do this for our hemorrhagic strokes because this is probably part of the problem with the hemorrhagic strokes. And then I also wanted to point out, these are our nursing things that we're gonna do, but it's not gonna be just the nurse. There's gonna be a whole team of people working with the stroke patient. So occupational therapy, physical therapy, they're probably gonna do range of motion exercises. They're gonna you know, um, assist with ADLs. One special thing about ADLs on a stroke patient is when you're getting them dressed, dress the affected side first because it's going to be easier for them. Social work is going to get involved. Likely they're going to go to like a rehab afterwards. So social work is going to be the one that sets that up. And then speech therapy, especially if they're having any sort of communication problem or swallowing problem. So. These are our nursing things, but this is gonna be a whole team of people, not just the nurse, to care for this patient. Strokes are the number five leading cause of death here in the United States, which is terrible, right? That's a scary statistic, especially knowing this other statistic. 80% of them are preventable, okay? So the vast majority of them we can prevent in the first place. How are we gonna do that? Good patient teaching. So if you're taking care of a patient who's in an at-risk population, like the obese or those who have diabetes, right? This is what you're gonna teach them. Also, if you're taking care of a patient who's already had a stroke in the past, this is what you can teach them to prevent a future stroke, okay? So 
eating healthy, exercising daily, monitoring their blood pressure, so going to their checkups, going to their regular doctor visits, making sure their blood pressure is in a normal, safe range. Of course, stop smoking. If your patient is smoking, you should always encourage them to stop smoking and have resources available to help them. If they are overweight, they should lose weight. They need to get their cholesterol checked. Just like we're checking our blood pressures, we also want to be checking our cholesterol. And then possible daily aspirin. Now, this is not uh, for you to say, okay? So don't think as the nurse you're going to tell them this. This is something that the doctor would suggest on an individual basis. And of course, I would be remiss to not talk about a TIA if I'm talking about strokes. A TIA is called a transient ischemic attack often referred to as a mini stroke, okay? And it is important, it is important that we know what a TIA is. What it is, is a temporary blockage of blood flow to the brain. It is considered a huge warning sign for a possible future stroke. So this is very important. And these patients need to be evaluated. Now, most people, if they have a stroke stroke, like a real stroke, right, that we've been talking about, they know that's an emergency, they need to go to the doctor. Sometimes people have these TIAs and they kind of brush it off because it's temporary, right, transient. So they go, oh, it's fine, you know, maybe next time I have my annual checkup, I'll bring it up, okay? These people need to be evaluated as well. These people need to be taken seriously and treated as if it was like a proper stroke, a proper, you know, cerebral vascular accident. It's very important that we teach the patients that they've had a TIA that they need to be followed up with. Because there are people who have multiple of these before they ever seek any kind of care. Okay, so very important, TIAs considered a huge warning sign for a possible future stroke and these patients need to be checked out as well. One thing I wanted to add on this video is I know most of the people watching this are nursing students, but just in case you are watching this and you're not a nursing student and you just wanted to learn a little bit more about strokes and who's at risk and stuff like that, I am not prescribing or treating or trying to cure anything, okay? So I'm just trying to educate about what a stroke is. Please do not say, oh, the lady on YouTube told me to take aspirin every day, so I'm going to start taking aspirin every day. I am not telling you that, okay? If you have any sort of concerns, definitely contact your regular family health doctor. So thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.